Um, next, we have Jack Whitaker, who is a research fellow at the Institute for Global Maritime Studies at the Fletcher School of Law and Diplomacy at Tufts University. Thank you. Thank you very much, Hadla. Okay, so today I'm going to give a presentation on hauling data. Before I begin, though, I just want to say thank you to everyone here and also to President Grimson for making this forum democratic and open. As a student, it's a rare opportunity to speak for such a distinguished audience. So hauling data. We all know fishermen haul fish, but what if fishermen could also take information about the environment, about the oceans, about the fish, and haul data? Before I begin, I just want to say the importance of learning about the oceans and the fish stocks are, can't be understated. But basically, if we think about it, they're a common resource. And so it can be abused if there aren't regulations. And if we don't really know how many fish there are, um, we might not manage them as well as we can. So it's a common resource, both the ocean and the fish. And that's why it would be beneficial to learn more. So here we go. Measuring oceans and fisheries. So basically, the premise of hauling data is creating collaborative research partnerships between fishermen and scientists. And this is really good because they have complementary uh, skill sets. You have the fishermen over here who have great expertise with operating vessels, with knowing local waters, and with the fish themselves. And then on the other hand, you have scientists who are very strong when it comes to methodology, designing experiments, and running experiments. So we can bring these people together. We can get information on the oceans, including temperature, salinity, pH, which are all very important for measuring ocean conditions. We can also go a little deeper and do conductivity, depth, chlorophyll, and even carbon. And we know in an area like the Arctic, changes happen sometimes even twice as much as the oceans around the other parts of the world. So when it comes to fishing, we can also get data on fish. We can use onboard observers, um, as is done in the United States and New England. Um, but maybe in the future, we can do something a little more innovative. We can have facial recognition software, similar to that of the TSA. And basically, every fish will get a mug shot. So, you know, it can count how many fish there are and what type of fish there are super quickly. So I studied this in the US context. And I just want to say, as I'm going through this, I'd like you to think about your own unique government, your own unique fishing community, and your own unique um, environmental groups, um, and how this partnership could benefit you. So I'm just going to run through my own specific uh, context, and maybe you'll see some parallels. So in the US, there's currently many frustrations which hauling data could alleviate. There's the debate between fishermen and regulators. There's this question, how many fish are there actually? And how many fish can we catch in a sustainable way? And fishermen oftentimes doubt the numbers of an organization like NOAA because they feel like they're too conservative to allow for practical fishing. You also have limited resources for ocean and climate studies. And this is just a limit of staff time, monetary resources, et cetera. And then finally, on a more, more personal note, there's the financial hardships for fishing communities with reduced stock. So I was speaking with a ground fisherman in Maine and he said to me, Jack, in the last three to five years, the fish stocks for the ground fish have been cut 90%. Point blank, he said, what other industry could survive a 90% cut and still put food on the family's table? So here, I'm, here I am presenting an optimal solution. We can deploy a hybrid research fleet to satisfy the needs of environmental groups to learn more about the environment and get more sample size and more information. We can satisfy the needs of scientists who want to expand their range. And we can get uh, regulators to have more accurate numbers so that they can make more informed decisions. And we can bring fishermen in so we can give some supplementary income and also make it so that they can do their job better as fishermen. Now, to give you kind of the sexy, glory-like future vision, there's 70,000 fishing boats in the world. We can make these all active data collecting vessels. And we can use technology like the emergent uh, internet of things and create like a living nervous system where we can experience changes and know what's really going on. 
in this super synced up way. So to do this, we just have to nourish the market for end users, show the benefit, give fishermen ownership of their data so they can have supplementary income, and also just drive home the amount of money these partnerships can save. And I was talking with Dr. Glenn Goakowitz of Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute in the US. He's done this successfully and done some very incredible research. And I asked him, Glenn, what's the, what's the cost breakdown? Doing this the new way is $35,000 a year for getting a fleet. And you can, you can get much wider spread of an area. Traditionally, though, it costs $300,000 a year So for the work that he does specifically. So these partnerships can also save money and bring economic benefits. Just going quickly, this is RBR Concerto. This is the YSI Castaway. And this is the Hobo Lodger. And these are all devices that measure different dimensions of the ocean. This does conductivity, depth, and temperature. This can be outfitted to do pH as well as, well as CTD. And this is just a sheer temperature measurement. And it can be purchased for the cost of just $129, so very cheap. These are a little more expensive, uh, a couple thousand. So the keys to making this work are valuing the fishermen's time and expertise, ensuring methodological soundness by partnering up with academic institutions, and this could be academic institutions worldwide, and then finally securing data pathways so the information is collected and transferred in a secure way and a reliable way. And like I mentioned, this could be old school like a USB and iPads, but it could also be on a much larger scale with cloud computing, internet of things. Finally, I just want to close with some beautiful images of the ocean. This, uh, this idea of learning about the ocean um, can be done with other vessels, not just fishing vessels. Uh, Long Island Sound, we have a ferry. It does the same route, and it collects data on an onboard system. The same could be done with a cargo ship. Um, and then the final thing is there are also commercial applications for measuring data. If you were to measure something like wind, for example, you could find places where in the ocean the wind is strongest, and that could be for some private developers. So finally, I just want to conclude with an olive branch, which is saying that there's a bigger picture here, which is learning about the ocean, learning about the fish, learning about our environment, should be done in kind of a spirit of co collaboration, cooperation, and kind of echoing uh, Dr. Berkman's ideas, uh, who is a longtime expert in the area, learning about, uh, learning how to do this in kind of a peaceful, peaceful way. Um, if you're interested in this idea and you kind of want to be a part of the movement, see how it applies to your area, I encourage you to contact me uh, through the program or also the startup Blue Water Metrics, which you can find the address here. I encourage you to write it down, reach out. And this research stemmed from my work with the Institute for Global Maritime Studies. And I just want to say thank you to Rocky uh, Whites for bringing me here, and I appreciate your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Howard.